Welcome to the TPC Desktop video series. This video will introduce you to importing data into Traverse PC Desktop. Let's start our discussion of importing data into Traverse PC by taking a look at a chapter in one of the learning guides. Let's put the cursor over the task manager and I'm going to come down to the Getting Started panel and click on Learning Guide. Traverse PC displays the learning guide and I'm going to click on the chapter on importing data from a data collector the topic of this video. Traverse PC has a chapter that will walk you through the uh, basic uh, steps of importing data into Traverse PC. It even supplies a file called Learn Import TRV in the Sample Surveys folder. We're going to be using that file today. I'm going to click down one more page and show you that here are the steps for importing the foundation shots that we're going to do in this video along with the screen captures that you'll see in the video as well. So when you're done watching you can come back to the learning guide and walk through some of these same steps on your own. Let's come back to Traverse PC now and let's load that sample file. So we're going to open the task manager and come down to sample surveys. Traverse PC displays the surveys in the sample surveys folder. Let's come down to learn import and double click it. Traverse PC opens the learning guide uh, survey for us and displays the last drawing that was open. So we can see we have a survey with three lots and each lot has a setback in it. Let's put the cursor over the points manager and we can see the points that are involved in the survey. Now let's put the cursor over the traverse manager and in fact I'm going to come up and pin the traverse manager to the desktop so we can leave it open during the video. Notice here are our three lot traverses and three setback traverses. When we import data we are adding additional points to the point manager and sometimes additional traverses to the traverse manager as we bring data into the survey. And we're going to show you how that works today. Let's go over an import now. We'll come up to the file menu in the desktop, expand the menu, and come down and choose import. Traverse PC tells us we're about to change or close the survey. Do you wish to save it first? We're going to say no. First thing we want to do is expand the list of types in the dialog box and we can see there are many total station, data collector, GPS types listed here, even other software programs that Traverse PC supports. We're going to come down and choose the Sokia SDR 3X. Now I want to click on the settings button next to it and I want to make sure that the details option is turned on. You're going to see why in just a moment. If I were connected directly to a total station or a data collector, I might want to show the direct connection down here and tell Traverse PC that I'm going to be transferring the data from the device directly into Traverse PC. That's not the case today. Today we have a, a file we're working with, so we're going to hide the direct connection and we're going to come up and browse to that file. Traverse PC opens the survey job folder and here's the SDR file we want to import. So let's double click that. I'm going to choose the preview button so we can see the data that we're going to be bringing in. Notice right here is foundation ties. That's actually the name of the project on the data collector and we're going to see that again in just a moment. Let's close out that preview. Let's come down and choose import now. Traverse PC tells us in the details that it's reading the file, that it's brought in 40 points, and finally it's closing the file and is finished. So let's close the dialog box now and see what actually happened as a result of the import. The first thing we notice is one of the views in Traverse PC Desktop called the Message View. Let's scroll back up to the top and we can see that when we clicked on the Details option in the Settings dialog box for the SDR data collector, we told Traverse PC to tell us everything it brought in from the file. So it shows us that the first thing it found in the file was a point number three and it brought in the description and coordinates. Then it found a record that said we're going to occupy point three. Then it found information about the back site, point one. And finally, a side shot to 2-1, a side shot to 2-2, and etc. This is great information that you can print out and stick in the job folder. Uh, think of it like a field book, only created from the, the data collector. Let's close that message view out. Let's come over to our point manager that we looked at earlier. And see how we've added all those points now to the survey? 
Now let's take a look at the traverse manager. So in addition to the lot and the setback traverses, we also have a traverse now called foundation ties. Remember the job name from the data collector that we saw when we previewed the file? It was called foundation ties. So Traverse BC took that job name from the data collector and used it to name the traverse that holds that same data inside of our survey. Let's open that foundation ties traverse now. We're going to put the cursor over it and double click. Traverse PC displays a new traverse dialog box, it gives us the name of the traverse, and allows us to pick the format and settings that we want to use to display that traverse. So from the format list, I'm going to choose Control 2D. I happen to know on this particular job that we didn't have to record instrument height or target height, so this would be a good format to display the data in. For the settings, I want to choose a predefined setting to draw the traverse in the drawing. I'm going to choose one called Topo Shots. You can create your own or modify these as you want. I'm going to set the tag to make sure Traverse PC draws this traverse for us in the current drawing. Let's choose OK now. Notice how Traverse PC has opened a traverse view, and I'm going to choose single rows per point. And over here in the drawing, it's drawn those points for us inside the drawing. The reason it's drawing those, if we come over to the Traverse Manager, is because we put an X in the box here. We tagged that traverse. If I untag the traverse, it doesn't show up. If I tag the traverse, it does show up. Let's move back over to our traverse view now. And we see that the Control 2D format created uh, fields or columns for slope distance, zenith angle, horizontal angle, coordinates, and description. Another thing to note about um, this traverse view is that we are looking at the raw data or field data directly from the data collector as if we had typed it into this traverse in Traverse BC instead of collecting it electronically. The great thing about that is that if I need to make any changes to that electronic data, I can do it very easily here. So if I assume the starting coordinates, I can easily come in and type in new coordinates for my starting point or for my backside. If I had a target height that was wrong and I was doing 3D field data, I could easily correct those target heights and hit recompute and Traverse PC will take those corrections and recompute the Traverse for me. So not only do I have the uh, dis data displayed that I want, but I have raw data to work with inside the Traverse. So let's actually go ahead and do something with this data just for the fun of it. Notice here that the point labels are 2-1 down through 2-15 for all the foundation shots taken on lot 2. So we're going to select those points, right click, and come down to a command called Add Selected Points to Traverse. Let's left click that, and Traverse BC creates a new traverse for us, which we're going to call Foundation 2. We're going to tell Traverse PC to use a foundation format for the traverse view and we're going to tell it to use a foundation settings to actually draw it for us. We want to set the tag so that it shows up in the drawing, and we're simply now going to append this new traverse to the traverse manager. Let's come over here and see what happened. So over here in the drawing view, we've now outlined that foundation because we put those points into the foundation to traverse that we now see in the traverse manager. And because that traverse is tagged, it shows up in the drawing. Let's come back to our Traverse view. Let's scroll down here and do the same thing for the next lot, Lot 3. Let's highlight all the points that start with 3-1, or 3-whatever. There's nothing special about these point labels. The crew that took this information um, decided to use the point numbers to delineate which lots the points were on. They could easily have put a, a code in the description to do exactly the same thing. Let's tell Traverse PC again we want to add these points to a Traverse. Traverse PC has incremented the name for us because we told it to. Everything else is the same. So once again, we just append. Let's come down and do the same thing for the rest of the points. Right click, add selected points to Traverse, and append. Now at this point, I don't need to see my foundation ties Traverse anymore, so I'm going to close that out. If I come back to my Traverse Manager, I don't need to see the foundation ties Traverse in the drawing anymore. So I simply untag it. The final thing I'd like to do here is to select the foundation 
traverses we just created, I'm going to right click and go into Traverse Settings. This is part of the Quick View technology that draws uh, the drawing for us. Let's click on our Fill tab and tell Traverse PC that we want to fill those foundation traverses with a solid silver color. When we choose OK, Traverse PC does just that for us in the drawing. 